Introduction to the Bastiat Collection, an audio Mises Daily by Mark Thornton. Claude Frederick Bastiat was born in Bayonne, France, on June 29, 1801. He was orphaned at age nine and raised by relatives. He worked in his uncle's accounting firm and then became a farmer when he inherited his grandfather's farm. After the middle class revolution of 1830, Bastia became politically active and was elected Justice of the Peace in 1831 and to the Council General, a county-level assembly, in 1832. He was elected to the National Legislative Assembly after the French Revolution of 1848. Bastia was inspired by and routinely corresponded with Richard Cobden and the English Anti-Corn Law League and worked for free trade associations in France. Bastia wrote sporadically starting in the 1830s, but in 1844 he launched his amazing publishing career when an article on the effects of protectionism on the French and English people was published in the Journal des Economistes, which was held to critical acclaim. The bulk of his remarkable writing career that so inspired the early generation of English translators and so many more is contained in this collection. If we were to take the greatest economist from all ages and judge them on the basis of their theoretical rigor, their influence on economic education, and their impact in support of the free market economy, then Frederick Bastia would be at the top of this list. As Murray N. Rothbard noted, Bastia was indeed a lucid and superb writer whose brilliant and witty essays and fables to this day are remarkable and devastating demolitions of protectionism and all forms of government subsidy and control. He was a truly scintillating advocate of an untrampled free market. This book brings together his greatest works and represents the early generation of English translations. These translators were like Bastia himself, people from the private sector who had a love of knowledge and truth and who altered their careers to vigorously pursue intellectual ventures, scholarly publishing, and advocacy of free trade. This collection represents some of the best economics ever written. He was the first and one of the very few to be able to convincingly communicate the basic propositions of economics. The vast majority of people who have learned anything about economics have relied on Bastia or publications that were influenced by his work. This collection, possibly more than anything ever written about economics, is the antidote for economic illiteracy regarding such things as the inadvisability of tariffs and price controls. And everyone, from the novice to the Ph.D. economist, will benefit from reading it. This collection consists of three sections, the first of which contains his best-known essays, in That Which is Seen and That Which is Not Seen, Bastia equips the reader to become an economist in the first paragraph, and then presents the story of the broken window, where a hoodlum is thought to create jobs and prosperity by breaking windows. Bastia solves the quandary of prosperity via destruction by noting that, while the apparent prosperity is seen, what is unseen is that which would have been produced had the windows not been broken. According to Rothbard, in this way, the economist, Bastia's third-level observer, vindicates common sense and refutes the apologia for destruction of the pseudo-sophisticate. He considers what is not seen as well as what is seen. Bastia, the economist, is truly the sophisticated analyst. Professor Guido Holzman credits Bastia for discovering this counterfactual method, which allowed Bastia to show that destructionism and a variety of government policies is actually the path to poverty, not prosperity. This lesson is then applied to a variety of more complex cases, and readers will never be able to deny that scarcity exists and will always, hopefully, remember that every policy has an opportunity cost. If nothing else, they will not believe, as often is claimed, that earthquakes, hurricanes, and wars lead to prosperity. The remaining essays cover the important institutions of society, the law, government, money, and capital, 
where Bastia explains the nature of these institutions and disabuses the reader of all the common misconceptions regarding them. The second section is Bastia's Economic Sophisms, a collection of 35 articles on the errors of protectionism broadly conceived. Here Bastia shows his mastery of the methods of argumentation, using basic logic and taking arguments to their logical extreme to demonstrate and ridicule them as obvious fallacies. In his Negative Railroad, Bastia argues that if an artificial break in a railroad causes prosperity by creating jobs for boatmen, porters, and hotel owners, then there should not be one break, but many. And indeed, the railroad should be just a series of breaks, a negative railroad. In his article, An Immense Discovery, he asks, would it not be easier and faster simply to lower the tariff between points A and B rather than building a new railroad to transport products at a lower cost? In his article, The Petition of the Candle Makers, he argues in jest that a law should be passed to require that all doors and windows be closed and covered during the day to prevent the sun from unfairly competing with the maker of candles and that if such a law were passed, it would create high-paying jobs in candle and candlestick making, oil lamps, whale oil, etc., and that practically everyone would profit as a result. The third section is Bastia's book, Economic Harmonies, which was hastily written before his death in 1850, and is considered incomplete. Here he demonstrates that the interests of everyone in society are in harmony to the extent that property rights are respected. Because there are no inherent conflicts in the market, government intervention is unnecessary. The borrower wants the lender to thrive so that loans will be available, and the lender wants borrowers to thrive in order to collect interest on loans and to be paid back the loan principal. This book is the basis of the charges that critics have leveled against Bastia, claiming that he made theoretical errors and then failed to extend the corpus of theory. I have shown elsewhere that these criticisms must represent a misreading of Bastia, and Rothbard showed that Bastia made the vital contribution of returning economics to a focus on wants, exchange, and consumption, correcting the errors of British political economy. In a more recent and very important reappraisal of Bastia, Professor Holzman has shown my suspicions to be correct. He demonstrates that Bastia's harmonies is an important theoretical innovation that was widely dismissed by interventionists and attacked by equilibrium theorists. Interventionists dismissed it because the analysis proves that society can thrive without any government intervention in the economy. Equilibrium theorists saw Bastia's conception of harmony as competition for their own concept of equilibrium, and rightly so, because while equilibrium is at best a useful fiction, Harmony is an accurate conception of what actually exists in a free market world. Therefore, the equilibrium approach can in some cases mimic or equal harmony, but it can also be applied to misleading ends and is inapplicable to others. Holzman also brilliantly shows how critics have misread and therefore misunderstood Bastia's concept of value and service and that their criticisms are invalid. The Holzman reappraisal smashes the critics and their echoes and is therefore an important primer for this section. Also see the important article by Joseph T. Salerno, who shows the marginalization of Bastia and the French school involved a long process of deliberate distortion by their doctrinal enemies among the Anglo-American economists. Patrick James Sterling translated Bastia's Economic Harmonies in 1860 and Economic Sophisms in 1863, which are reproduced in this collection. Sterling was a student of Thomas Clomers, an important Scottish economist from the first half of the 19th century and leader of the Free Kirk Schism from the Church of Scotland. Sterling was the author of the book The Philosophy of Trade, in which he portrayed a theory of prices and profits and examined the principles that determine the relative value of goods, labor, and money. In his book, The Australian and California Gold Discoveries and Their Probable Consequences, Sterling examined the impact of the large 19th century gold discoveries and the laws that determine the value and distribution of money, and where he exhibited a proto-Austrian theory of the business cycle. 
Sterling has recently resurfaced in the economics literature as the author of the oldest known undergraduate essay on economics. We remain uncertain regarding the early translation of the essays in the first section of this volume. Many such translations of this period were unsigned. But what we do know seems to reinforce the Scottish connection to Bastia. William Hogskin, who held the chair of political economy at the University of Edinburgh, translated the essays from Things Seen and Things Not Seen for publication in newspapers and were later published in a booklet. And Economic Sophisms was first translated by Mrs. Louisa McCord, also a Scottish surname, from Charleston, South Carolina. The first section is based on the David Wells, also a Scottish surname, edition of the essays which contain the long out-of-print essay, What is Money? This collection of early translations is dedicated to improving economic literacy and eliminating the frustration of economic teachers everywhere. No one is better to do so, and in such a colorful and forceful and entertaining way, than Bastia. Enjoy. The Ludwig von Mises Institute hopes you have enjoyed this audio Mises Daily. For a world of free market literature, media, and discussion, visit Mises.org.